In 1879, at the age of 23, John Singer Sargent visited Spain for the first time, and it absolutely awakened a new energy in him, and began a spree of some of his best and most dynamic works up until then. This first visit to Spain totally entranced the young, but very talented artist. At that point, he was mostly painting landscape scenes, and only had a few well-received portraits under his belt. While in Spain, he studied the works of Velázquez. He was absorbed in the energy of the culture's music and dance. This trip really opened up something for him. He renewed his interest in music again and allowed himself to be more experimental with his paintings in order to capture the ephemeral moments. The Spanish term el jaleo translates to the commotion or the racket in English. It's what you'd call a lively party with good music and energy. So after his first trip to Spain, John Singer Sargent, inspired by all he had taken in, painted an energetic scene and titled it El Jaleo. Several aspects make John Singer Sargent's El Jaleo painting very unique. Subject matter. Picture this. A dimly lit Spanish tavern, alive with the fervor of a flamenco dancer. Now, back in the late 1800s, this type of scene was practically unheard of in the world of art. So risque. But Sargent, being the daring innovator he was, decided to embrace the challenge. With El Jaleo, he thrust the vibrant energy of flamenco into the canvas, immortalizing the passion and the intensity of the dance for all to behold. It really does capture the energy and intensity of the performance. By its very nature, a flamenco dance is a difficult thing to capture in a moment and in paint. There's no posing in the studio for this kind of subject matter. At least not in a way that makes you feel like you were there. An instant snapshot caught in oil and pigment. Fusion of traditions. Sargent trained in the European artistic style, but was not content to remain confined within its boundaries. And although he did it, he thought it was too rigid and often opted for the freedom of plein air works, especially later in life. As a child, his family traveled around Europe and France and Germany and Italy and Switzerland, and he didn't do well in the school system, mostly because of the constant traveling. But this was a good thing. Sargent got a great education from the School of Life, which exposed him to a variety of cultures and perspectives. El Jaleo blends Sargent's artistic training in the formal European art traditions with the influence of Spanish art and culture. It combines elements of realism, impressionism, and even a touch of abstraction, resulting in a unique visual language that transcends strict categorization. He was many things all at once, and it made his work stand out. El Jaleo is a harmonious symphony of artistic elements through the mind and hand of a skilled artist. The use of light and color. Sargent's mastery shines through with his ability to evoke mood and atmosphere through his painterly techniques. The dimly lit tavern setting becomes a stage bathed in dramatic lighting. Bright areas of illumination contrast with deep shadows, heightening the intensity of the scene. Sargent strategically places patches of light on the dancer, accentuating her movements and infusing the painting with a sense of theatricality. The patches of light directing the eye around the canvas toward what you look at next. Your gaze follows its own dance. And the vibrant and bold colors, particularly the reds and yellows, pulsate with energy, mirroring the fiery spirit of flamenco. Sargent's skillful use of color and light transport the viewer into the heart of the performance, where they can almost feel the heat and hear the rhythmic beats of the dance. Then there's the expressive brushwork. Loose yet very accurate brushwork were Sargent's trademark, something that does not come easy to many artists. Oh my god, I've tried so hard. El Jaleo showcases his exceptional ability to capture movement and energy with his distinctive style. The loose and dynamic brushstrokes convey the spontaneity and vitality of the flamenco performance. Sargent uses bold and expressive strokes, at times using really thick impasto to create texture and add depth to the painting. So much confidence with every thick pass of paint. So jealous. Placing marks just perfectly so where they need to go, that is what's so amazing about Sargent. And personally, his brushwork is my favorite thing about his art. How things look so casually put together and correct, just nonsensical squiggles up close, and then these essential shapes that when you view them all together, they're perfect. Every mark is made with intent and purpose, and it sits exactly where it needs to. God. I love Sargent, if you couldn't tell already. 
This expressive technique not only brings the dancer to life, but also adds a sense of urgency and immediacy to the overall composition. The brushwork reflects the pulsating rhythm of flamenco, as if the very essence of the dance is embedded in each stroke of Sargent's brush. Then there's the scale and composition. The painting is large and demands your attention. It measures approximately 7 feet tall by 12 feet wide, which allows for an immersive viewing experience. The composition is carefully crafted to draw the viewer into the heart of the scene. The central figure, a flamenco dancer, commands the stage as the dominating element in the canvas, and she's surrounded by a group of musicians and onlookers. Sargent's deliberate placement of the musician and spectators around her enhance the sense of anticipation and excitement. I think this strategic arrangement, combined with the scale of the painting, creates a visual spectacle. If you get to visit the Isabella Gardner Museum in Boston, Massachusetts, where the painting lives, spend some time with it and allow it to transport you to that Spanish tavern. It will make you feel like you were there. Thank you so much for watching. If you find these moments and stories in history as interesting as I do, I would deeply appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more art-related content. Until next time, take care and go look at some art. I would love to know what you want to hear about next. I have so many ideas of my own, but it would be interesting to know what is resonating. Uh, I've also been interested in taking a, a really big complex painting like the Garden of Earthly Delights, for example, and kind of zooming into all the different parts and zones of it because there's just so much going on in so many really interesting pieces of work and just talking about what the different things mean and maybe little references that are found and just interesting things from art historians that we can all learn about. Um, if you're interested in that, let me know.